Oh, hi. Um, here I'm going to give you a quick preview of the new areas tool, um, part of the 4D library. This tool is yet to be released, um, so I am open for suggestions, but let's have a look and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so now I've got a four unit site with common area. Um, you can see my site coverage for unit four is 210, just as per this label. Now, if I change the site coverage area, because there's been a design change, you can see we're at 198. But for this area to update in the box down the bottom, we need to have the area mode active. So let's open up this new palette. And you can see now the site coverage is 198. So it's, it's updated as soon as it was opened. Now we're, we're kind of in a live mode. So as I move these area fills, um, we get a live update to each one of the open space area boxes. Okay, so let's try adding a new one. Uh, I'll grab the labels as well. Drag a copy. Okay, and then I'll extend my common, oh no, I'll leave the common area, but I'll get the site area. Take that through. Drop the site down to here. Drag a copy of the, the area box. And now I need to link these areas to the area box. So to do that, I just select the relevant areas. So the site coverage fill, the site and the common area. Hit my little link button and I'll link it to this area box. Okay. So now I just need to change the numbers. So this is unit five. This is unit four or five coverage. And let's have a look at this area box. Yep, so that's standard area, common area. And so that should be site area, and this is standard area. And there we have it. So now you can see that's linked as I'm moving the area, what well, fill. It's changing. You can see this, this is actually a slab and this is a fill. You can use meshes as well if you like, or zones. Next we go over to the overall areas and we need to add in our, our site here. So I'll press this button and click on the area box and it will now select all the linked areas. And I just add in my new site, go to the link, click, and now you can see unit five, it's just popped in there. So you can see it's out of order there. So I, I'll go over to here. You can actually sort by area size or name alphabetically. So it's sorting by area um, automatically. And in this case, I just want to do that alphabetically, but put the site area at the top. Okay, so there we have them all in there. So we can see we've got a site coverage for each one of the units. And I might want to apply the site coverage to each one of these units here. So unit, oh, that's the override. So let's use a multiplier for unit one, uh, unit five, we want to use a multiplier of 59.4, 59.4, multiplier here, 0.68, obviously, 0.569, 0.68, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0.569, 0
0.55, 0 0.534. Okay. And I tick these little boxes if I want to show the percentage in, in brackets next to the name. Okay. And there we have it. So these site areas can be used for easily creating multi-unit area boxes. It, obviously, this can be done in ARCHICAD using properties, but um, it would be very, very complex. Um, and you can use them for just simple um, areas like so. Um, So this one's linked. So if I change the alfresco, you can see that's updating, updating, easy. So in this example file, I've got lots of different areas all linked and each area box is keeping track of the, um, of the fills or zones or slabs that it's linked to. Um, so this will probably be released in the, in the coming weeks, but I'm um, after any sort of feedback or suggestions, um, or if anyone's willing to um, join the beta testing, please let me know. All right, thanks for your time.